Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel, this time without glitches or artifacts, I promise. And today we'll have a look into classes, how we use them with service at rendering and what some weird error messages with regards to Pojo means. Let's get started. Okay, before we begin deep diving into Nux and classes and service at rendering, we all know classes are a bit of a polarizing feature in JavaScript. Some really enjoy using them, especially if they may have an OOP background. Some really try to avoid them. And for me, I'm a bit on the middle ground, but more towards the avoid, but because technically I, I rarely use them. Uh, I feel especially when using Vue and Nux, there are lots of nice abstraction layers that are not necessarily classes, but I see the use case and I have used them a dozen times as well. Anyway, especially if you use a library, you don't have any say in it anyway. You take what the library provides you or use another library, but if that's not really possible, you have to deal with it. But here comes the problem, especially when using server set rendering, classes can be a bit of a pain. So let's see why, how to solve that, and I'll explain you the background. Let's get, as usual, into our tiny demo application. And yes, this time it's really tiny because we have our Nux config that is once again purely empty. We have a framework class as util, which contains a class because, well, it's about classes, right? It's called awesome framework. We can pass in a name, the constructor, and that will be set then internally. So far, so good. And then we have our app.view. And here we use use async data with a key. Doesn't matter much, but it has to be unique, as you know. And then we return here a new instance of this awesome framework class containing Nuxt.js because, well, Nuxt is an awesome framework, no? <laughs> and, well, if we would start the website, like the app now, and go straight away to localhost, what would we see? Maybe some of you know that already. This, exactly. The good old Arrow 500. And if you've seen my use state video, um, if not, of course, it's in the description, it's worth a look, you might have seen this error message already. It says, cannot stringify arbitrary non-pojos. But what does it mean? The whole idea here is if you send state from the server to the client, and that's what use async data is doing for us under the hood as well, same for use state, by the way, then um, somehow we need a representation of that that can be sent. And usually that's JSON, right? So if you have an object or an array, strings, they can all be expressed as JSON. But with classes, it's a had more complex. Why? Well, because classes can contain functions, for example. They have lots of inner work they could do. Compared to a plain object, well, they are a bit, let's say, more expressive and powerful and self-contained as well. So what can we do here? Well, one idea to get that class to actually be representable in JSON would be to create a to JSON method. And that's totally valid. Then when you would pass it over, the to JSON method would be invoked and the result, which should be all the values that are necessary, so all the internal class values, well, they are then passed along from the server to the client. But the problem is, well, we don't get the class instance out of that straight away, right? So it would be pretty nice if we would have a chance to not only, if we can define the toJSON method, get the class instance back, but also have some case if we use a library that has a class and didn't provide a to JSON method. What do we do then? And the answer is something that Nux provides for quite a few versions now, which are custom payload reducers and revivers. Let's have a look what they do and what they are. To use these advanced payload features, we have to create a new Nux plugin. So let's do this straight away by create plugins and let's say payload.ts, something like that. And in here, we want to export our default uh, as usual, but here we don't use define Nux plugin, but define payload plugin. So we indicate, okay, this is a plugin that is related to the payload. And now I will turn off Copilot because, well, we don't need the completions for here, no spoilers. And now we have to do two things. We have to define a function that first identifies um, the thing we want to transform. So let's say identifies the awesome framework um, class, and then we need to get the data, right? The data that should be JSON representable. 
And then the next step is, that would be uh, server side. So here we get the data, and then we want to revive uh, the payload, which means we have to take the data and create a new class instance based on that. This is very important. The good part is we have all the freedom we need. So even if you have more complex classes, it's definitely possible. You can call internal methods and do whatever you want. And let's do that. The first thing we have to do for that is define a payload reducer. So weird word, I know, but bear with me. It needs a name, so we just can call it awesome framework like the class. And here we have to figure out what exactly are identifiers that the data from the payload that should be merged into the payload is of that class. So we say data, there's a function, and here we can do whatever we want. And we could say, okay, let's say we return the data is the instance of awesome framework, because then we know it's part of this class. So far, so good. And then we need to return name in this case, right? If you have more complex things, then you can also say, oh yeah, if data instance of awesome framework, then you can return lots of things here, right? In this case, as I said, you could do name just here, name, data.name. Yeah, let's roll with this, that's fine. That's easy to extend if you have other properties and so on and so on. Also very important, these properties don't have to be one-to-one -one copies of the class ones. If you had need custom properties like, oh, uh, this one is, I don't know, I invoke this in this method, so you can basically replay what you did before, that's also totally fine. As I said, you have the chance to express everything you need in this reducer function. And now we need to revive the payload. That's the second part. So let's say the class, okay, it, it's part of the server state. It should be serialized. It should be put into the payload. Then this whole function would be executed. And then we get that object with the name again, right? And it's mapped. So we all know it's type awesome framework. So it's no problem to then define a payload reviver. So the counterpart of that, name it the same way. That's very important. Otherwise, we will not have a chance to get the data again. And now we get set data, exactly what we saved here. And the idea would be now to say return new awesome framework, so a new class instance. And here we just say name, data.name. And that's it. Not name, data.name, because we didn't have an object. Let's say data.name. And if we save it now, we have zero problems. And uh, let's check out the website and see if what we did worked or not. And here we go. Awesome. It says Nux.js as it should. Perfect. And now let's do one more thing. Let's inspect the payload. You can also do that, of course, through the Nux Dev tools. But I disabled them here to have a bit of a, a cleaner um, app. And if we look for awesome framework, then very interestingly, we see that key right here. We also see other keys like reactive, for example, which is, well, as you guessed it, for your reactives and so on. And if you would have more, oh yeah, set is also in here, they all have uh, different identifiers. And there are lots of default functions as well in Nuxt already to ensure to serialize refs and reactives, as you've seen here, to do the same with bigint by default. So there are lots of things that work out of the box. For custom classes, you can definitely do as we just did here. And technically, that's the whole story. As I said, it might be a bit difficult to figure out the exact way for more complex classes, but in the end, it's always you somehow have to serialize what you want to do again. And with that revive function, you can just replay based on the data you get. So if you next time see that error cannot stringify arbitrary non-pojos, you know exactly, ah, oh, yeah, classes, either avoid them fully if you can, because that's still easier than writing a custom revive plugin, right? But if you have a library and can't work around it or you want to use them, then do as we just did straight away here. As usual, the code is in the description and then you won't having any problems stringifying your arbitrary non-pojos, which are arbitrary non, like non-plain old JavaScript uh, objects, because then they're not arbitrary, they're defined. That's it for this video. As I said before, and in the videos before, we'll do a bit more Nitro and Nux content in the upcoming weeks. As usual, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment if you will use it or not, if you've ever heard of it, and if you have any suggestions or questions. 
now the only thing left saying is see you next time and 